First, let's talk about what a single tenant net lease is and what it isn't, because I feel like even though it seems really straightforward as to what it is, a lot of people don't know. Uh, but a single tenant net lease is a single tenant net lease building. All right, let's, let's break that down. So single tenant, there's only one tenant in the building. It is not a multi-tenant situation. And because it is a single tenant, you can have the, you have the ability to have an absolute net lease on the property, which means that the tenant is fully responsible for maintaining everything to do with that property, which actually makes it a very attractive investment for a lot of investors. Think about that. If you're able to go buy a property and the tenant is responsible for everything, you're never gonna get phone calls as an investor of, hey, you know, the roof is leaking, come fix it. Or, hey, the lawn guys didn't show up and the grass is overgrown. You don't have to worry about any of that. And one of the beauties of that is that you can buy single tenant net leases across the country. You can buy them anywhere in the world because you don't necessarily have to be there to oversee the property. Now, while I do always recommend that you at least have some sort of asset management plan in place, whether that's you going out and keeping an eye on the property once a month, once a quarter, whatever, or you're hiring an asset manager and paying them to do that, which is often worth it, you gotta keep eyes on the building. Uh, but other than that, it is mailbox money. I mean, that is mailbox money real estate. An absolute net lease is very similar to a triple net lease where in a triple net lease, the tenant is responsible for their portion of the common area maintenance, the property taxes, and the building insurance. Well, since it's a single tenant, they pay 100% of everything. And again, you add that absolute part on top of it, and they cover all aspects of the property. You have no landlord responsibilities whatsoever. So for those reasons and many others, obviously single tenant net leases are a very attractive investment. So, I mean, I'm not investing in them because I don't think they're attractive. They're just not quite to the level of appreciation or returns that I would like to see for myself at this point in my career. I'll take my sunglasses off because I didn't realize I still had those on. When you're first getting started in real estate, single tenant net leases are really designed to help you preserve and slowly grow your capital. I look at them almost like bonds. Right? If you're investing in bonds, it's more of a preservation of capital strategy. You're gonna get a very low return on your capital, but it is a very safe, risk-free investment. Very similar to single tenant net lease properties. You're typically buying a property that has a very high credit tenant in there. So think of Walgreens or Arby's or Hardee's or any of these fast food concepts that doesn't necessarily own their own real estate. Could even be a Dollar General or a Walmart. We've seen all sorts of different single tenant net lease opportunities come across our desk. And with these national corporations, you're getting a pretty well guaranteed lease, right? Because the thing about STNLs is you're really buying the income. You're not necessarily paying what the property is worth, right? Because if you look at a price per square foot basis of some of these transactions for net leases, and it makes no sense in the world because you're paying six, seven hundred, eight hundred dollars per square foot sometimes. Well, it's not based on the value of the building, it's based on the value of the lease. And so that's why you're buying these high credit tenants because they have the ability to back up and pay that because at the end of the day, a lease is only as strong as the group that is guaranteeing it. So keep that in mind if you are gonna be investing in single tenant net leases. A lot of our clients that are investing in single tenant net leases have grown their portfolio over the years and are selling some portion of that portfolio and looking to avoid capital gains tax. Well, if you've all of a sudden got $2 million or $3 million in cash and you don't wanna pay 20% in capital gains tax on that, you could 1031 exchange it into a single tenant net lease. Your risk is very low, all things considered for commercial real estate, of course, and it's mailbox money. So you can go focus on other things. A lot of our clients will do that. They'll 1031 exchange into these single tenant deals. And at that point, like I said, it's more of a preservation of capital tactic for them. Since these tenants that are paying these rents are high credit and the returns are basically guaranteed, 
That means that the risk is lower, of course, like I said, which means that the payout is going to be lower. You're just not gonna get as high of a return on your capital since it's going to be a very desirable investment, right? Just about any group will want to buy that if they just want to park capital for a little bit. So in real estate, your risks and your returns are directly proportionate. As the risk goes up, your return should go up. As the risk goes down, your return should go down. 